Hey everyone, I believe it is day 64 of my study abroad adventure. I'm not positive, I'll check the date later. And it is Friday, love the weekend. Um, I will catch you up on Tuesday night, Wednesday, and Thursday. I've got some stories to tell about those. But I'm running a little bit behind because I have a hair appointment. <laughs> Something I've been thinking about doing for over a year now and I keep talking myself out of and then I had my teacher, uh, my camp, uh, the director of the program, she has like green on this side and then some purple on this side so I asked her who did it, she gave me the name and then impulsively two weeks ago on a Friday I was like just do it really just go do this and so I set up an appointment which I really want to do it right then and there like I was super excited about just doing this life-changing appearance look so I'm not saying what I have ideas but I'm hoping the artist has ideas so you're gonna get to see maybe I get a vlog I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable but I'm really excited I'm really really excited this is something I want to do and I feel very free and able to do it and this is a chance for me to show on the outside how I've changed on the inside so yeah gonna go do that and then I'll cut you up on the last weeks and then we'll see what happens from there I have a bit kind of busy kind of relaxed good weekend so thanks <laughs>
you definitely gonna wish it was just the math kids. It kind of reminds me what it's like to be around other people than just math majors. <laughs> Been a little bit spoiled, I realized. But we, they, because of that too, they don't want to have class in the next week because they have midterms where the rest of us were like, sure, whatever, it's an hour and a half once a week. But, um, so we're not going to have class, but those math kids are probably going to still get together and review with those who missed. So, that's okay. Then came back, did some homework, then I went to bed. Wednesday, we went to another school. Don't think there's anything remarkable about it, except there's actually like a security guard this time that we had to talk to, and then when we tried to leave, he like stopped us and talked to us and was like, and like that one definitely seemed a little bit more secure than what we've noticed. And I guess I have a topic paper we have to write that's due at the end of the semester that I need to pick a topic. Because we talked about that in a coffee shop. And then we went back and learned from Anna. Did a lot of, I love Anna's class. Just everything's so useful. But definitely makes my brain hurt after a while. <laughs> but in a good way compared to some of the other classes where my brain just hurts because it's like, I have no idea what's going on. And then Wednesday, I actually did really well on my homework this last week. I was very proficient in it. So I got, went to Bible study, still did Moses, and got to bed. No, I'm not going to say it at a decent time, but I got to bed. <laughs> and then uh, Thursday, woke up, went to Abstract Couch Club, and it was the longest two hours of my life. I do not understand how that for first 45 minutes and then even the second. The second one, it was a little bit faster. Oh, the clock just would not move. Normally it's really not that bad. Like I've never really felt like I would, the class time was dragging, but the class time was dragging. So, it was slow. And then, I'm making Thursday my coffee run day because it's so long of a day. I get coffee. Ashley didn't have power because so she was at the school already and we chit chat a lot. We, with that hour in between, that should be practicum time, but we don't need that much time for practicum. And then in practicum, we reviewed the tests that, the maturity tests that they take when they graduate. They have, it's kind of like the idea of the ACTs, but like every senior takes it right at the end of the year when they're done, and you, I, I don't know what happens when you fail, I forgot to ask that, but there's five subjects, math, Hungarian, something, something, choice one, <laughs> I think one's a foreign language. But um, we just looked at the math one, obviously, and I loved it. I was like, this makes so much more sense, because they have two different tests. They have a basic test, or a core test, and an advanced test. And so, if they're not that into math, and they're not planning to go on to college and stuff, they can just take the basic, and they only need a 20% to pass. 20%. So they uh, could just do really well in the first part, and they don't even have to really do the second part like they should. They don't really have to, because the second part's more difficult problems, but still, like, I was looking at it, and I, because she didn't explain it yet, I thought it was for younger age kids, and then she said seniors, and I was like, oh, this is totally capable of doing. But, and then the other one, I didn't look at that one, the other group did, but I guess it was tougher and had more criteria, and they need 10% to pass because it's tougher, but college, that's the one college isn't requiring, so, I mean, if you do want to go to college, you want to do math, they will want that test. That was cool. Then went on to Poisson method. And this is where I got a little bit frustrated. I guess it's not that bad. But we had a problem. It was a chessboard problem because we had lots of chessboard problems with knights. And the teacher had saw my answer the, week be the class before and didn't say anything. I mean, it was so cryptic. And then, you know, he asked us, and I'm just. First time, pretty much all semester, and a long time I've raised my hand because it's hard to motivate myself in my class to speak up when most of the time I'm wrong or I don't have valid proof or anything like that. So I raised my hand and he asked. And I put out my answer and he says, hmm, do you think this? And I'm like, I think I do. Of course, like, why do you think I'm after answering the question? And he goes, hmm, what, what do you think is the standard answer? Like, he just kind of ignored it and found out that I was totally wrong. 
totally and completely wrong. And it just frustrated me that he made me look like a complete idiot, which I don't need help doing that, so I don't know why he did it that way. And like, I didn't get too upset, I was more just really disappointed because this is the teacher I told you about that was really smart and he works with Poisson and I've had a lot of respect for him and in those moments I lost so much respect for him as an educator. Like I still respect him as a math person and what he, all the things he do, but does, but as an educator, I lost a lot of respect. I was like, wow, really? Like, if you knew I was wrong, then why did you call on me? Especially when I'm not the kid that answers the questions every single time. Like, I mean, I didn't speak up the rest of class again because I just obviously I don't feel comfortable there and it really, really irritated me. And more than anything, it's like, I just hope that I'm more aware of what's going on with my students, that I will never make a student feel like that. I really, really hope so. Because that, if I, if I know, if I know that I put a student through what he put me through, I'd be so disappointed in myself. And I'd be very disappointed in myself. So, yeah, I mean, I was in my control of my emotions. I broke down before in glasses and this was not one of them, so that's good. Mm, but mm, it really, really frustrated. Because what was funny was the very next question, which was still chessboard but with bishops, was I had it right. I mean, I didn't have a proof yet, it was the reason why I didn't answer, but also because he just made me look like an idiot right before. So, yeah. I haven't observed him in his classroom yet, though, but I need to. But the big thing is, like, you teach a bunch of brainiacs all day. When have you ever made a real effort to help the kid that struggles? Probably not, because you probably never do. And it just, for me, that's not educating. The, if they're a brainiac, they're gonna get it anyway. Like, giving me a bunch of problems to solve and never really helping me. And that's the other thing, like, I, I hate it when teachers bug me about, you should ask for more help and blah blah. So I mean, I appreciate that he doesn't, but he's n never even made a single effort to be like, I can tell you're struggling, what can we do to make this better? Like, can, is there anything you'd like to do? And like, no, he just never talks to me. Which is fine. I mean, with the situation, I totally get it. And because college professor is different than being a teacher and everything, it's okay. But it makes me lose respect for him as an educator. This is where, like, I feel so bad when I'm in edu when I'm in classes and I'm totally judging the professor because I'm educated on how to educate and that you are failing. So, but college professors are not the same. What I love though is then when I went on to problem solving. Uh, that teacher even said, I'm a bad teacher. Like, he recognized that, as, that he teaches elite kids and he's really good at the math, but he's not actually really good at educating. And that alone made me have more respect and think he was a better educator than Peter because he recognizes that what he does isn't quite educating. But, and truthfully, I feel like he's better because on my homework, he's made comments about trying to reach out to me. And, like, he, uh, he explains, okay, I mean, I think he gets really frustrated with his English. Not that it's bad, I think he, I think he doubts the words he says, and it's like, no, you're saying the right stuff, we just don't understand it still. <laughs> but, so yeah, I had a lot more respect for him. I just always feel bad when I get to his class because after abstract, abstract algebra, practicum, and Poisson method, I'm done. I'm so done. Which, I mean, Tuesday, I Poisson method and then him again, so. Yeah. So yeah, that was really frustrating, and I thought about coming home and just vlogging about me and really furious and, like, talking about it, but I decided it really wasn't that big of a deal. But what was a big deal was how I felt and to learn from it. So, yeah. After school, came home, didn't do anything, went to bed early, woke up early, and you heard about my day. Tomorrow I have school because we're training it off for Halloween. So, hopefully I can tell you what's going on then. Thanks for staying tuned to my adventure.